Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming today. My name is Melody Dacian, pronounced like this, Dacian. And uh, born in, in Montreal, raised in Nova Scotia. And now I'm based in Nelson, BC. Uh, 30 years in the music industry as vocalist, songwriter, band leader, recording artist, educator, etc. A lot of etc., which we'll talk about. Um, I'm a Juno National Jazz Awards and Kootenai Music Awards nominee and um, w, uh, Western Canadian Music Awards winner for my work with Altered Laws. I'm a juror for a Factor, Canada Council, and Columbia Kootenai Cultural Alliance. And I'm also a grant recipient, so I'm kind of like one leg on each side of that. Um, grant recipient for Factor, Canada Council, uh, Columbia Kootenai, well, excuse me, CKCA, I'll just use the acronym. Um, Creative BC, Amplify BC, and Rocco Radio. Um, I've been a music instructor since 2012, uh, program coordinator since 2015 at the Contemporary Music and Technology program in Nelson, BC, which is why I moved to Nelson. And now I'm school chair for the School of the Arts at Sample College. And I'm co-owner of a record label, which sounds fancy, but really, you just got to get a business's license. It's nothing more than that. <laughs> okay, so enough about me, about you. And a, a lot of what we're going to do today is going to be um, you answering questions and maybe thinking about things in a way you haven't thought about them before, but helping you define what it is you want. So first task, write the name of an artist you admire. And why do you admire them? So for this, you're just gonna list some adjectives, like three or four adjectives. I used my husband as a guinea pig the other day for this, and he said, because he's a great guitar player. That's, mm -hmm. that's fine, great. Why is he a great artist? Why is she a great artist? Why are they a great artist? These words will help you define who you want to be as an artist, whatever level you're at in your journey right now. Okay, now, with those same adjectives that you just wrote, wrote down, rewrite this phrase. I am, followed by the adjectives that you wrote down. Now, some of those words might ring true for you already. And in that case, underline those words that feel like they're true. <laughs> <laughs> and there are some words maybe on your list that don't feel right. Maybe when you wrote, I am this, I am that, I am that, maybe they didn't feel comfortable for you. And in that case, circle those words that do not feel comfortable for you in your statement. And we're going to come back to this. Moving on. There is a method to my madness. Uh -oh. So next to question number one, what do you want to be known for as an artist? Question two, what's the coolest thing that could happen with you and your music in five years? And don't stop yourself. What is the coolest thing that could happen to you and your music in five years? And if you're an entrepreneur, maybe you're not a musician, what's the coolest thing could ha that could happen to your business or your creation in five years? All right, question three. What is the coolest thing that could happen in one year? Okay, I'm going to go back to question one and kind of let you in on what I was getting at. Question one, what do you want to be known for? These are your long-term goals. It's a lot easier to define them when someone says, what do you want to be known for? than when someone says, what are your long-term goals? That's just too vague for me. But what do you want to be known for? Big picture, this is your long-term goal. And question two, reminding you, what was the coolest thing that could happen in five years? These are your medium term goals, drilling down to what's the coolest thing that could happen in one year. Those are your short term goals. So hopefully your medium and short term goals are informed by your overall, what do you want to be known for, right? They should kind of lead up to that ultimate question. What do you want to be known for? These answers are the first steps to defining what you want and creating your long, medium, and short-term goals. 
And your specific plans, which is where we're going to go next, are what turn your dreams into realities. And I love this quote by Yogi Berra, who is a famous baseball player and wit author. If you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else. Oh boy, I've been there. Where I don't have a plan, or I feel like my plans are too ambitious. Oh, my goals are too ambitious and then my life ends up living me instead of me being on a path that I've had some um, help in determining. All right, so we're going to start with the dream. What do you want to be known for? So it, for me, um, you know, who doesn't love Joni Mitchell, right? So it's easy for me to pick Joni Mitchell as a person I admire. So for me, Joni Mitchell is a prolific, profound songwriter with a unique and identifiable, identifiable voice and sound. So when I say Melody Dation is a prolific, profound songwriter with unique and identifiable sound, there are words that seem I'm working on and there are words that I'm not comfortable with, like prolific is not my thing. So I need to write more. That's pretty easy. So after the dream, we define our goals, we make a plan, and we're going to come back to make a plan because that's the hard work. It's, you know that, it's the saying, um, measure twice, cut once. Like if you don't actually spend the time it takes, right? You're not in your head. <laughs> if you don't spend the time to plan with deadlines and like things that lead to one another in a way that makes sense then it's just a wish, really, right? It doesn't, you can't do anything with that. You need more. And we'll come back to the plan. Then you make it real. So what I mean by that is you actually complete the actions. You do the things that you said you wanted to do. You finish. Here you go, you're going to acknowledge that you did those things. Then, this is really important too, the evaluation. You evaluate, um, what you were just trying to accomplish and you think what worked, what didn't work. Um, is my dream even the same as it was when I started? Do I need to adjust anything? What did I learn? If you don't do the evaluation, then you, then all the time that you spent on that plan and that one goal, um, it's not going to be as beneficial as it would be had you evaluated. And then lastly, you repeat. <laughs> so sorry, but after you get through this whole process, you go back to your next adventure, your next dream, your next goals and plans that you want to take care of. So let's look at make a plan. Um, I think we have time to actually do this. If we look at one of your short term goals, and then we're going to have each of you come up with the beginning of a plan that you can walk out of here with instead of just like, well, yeah, that was a great self-help talk, but nothing, you know, actually practical. So we're going to do something practical. So a plan requires actions and timelines. For this exercise, you will choose one short-term goal. You're going to design a plan with defined steps, deadlines, milestones, and or completion dates for each step. And, um, being specific about dates helps keep you moving forward towards each of your goals. Okay, so let's take one of your short-term um, goals. What do you want to have ac accomplished one year from now? So that's by November of 2023. Make it possible. Um, and keep in mind that lots of times things take longer than one might think. So. What's one thing that you can have accomplished by one year from now? Okay, with that in mind, step one, what's the first thing you can do to help you achieve this goal? What's the first thing you need to do? I was talking about this actually the other day. Um, sometimes the thought of doing is something is so new that you don't even know what you don't know, right? You're like, Okay, I want to release an EP, but you might have a feeling that you have no clue how to go about doing that. That's when you need to 
talk to someone who's gone through that process, a mentor, find a mentor who can help you with that, just to guide you in the right direction. And then once you start trying, you're gonna find out the things that you need to know. Okay, so along with that first step, you need to give yourself a deadline what date do you want to have this first step accomplished? One thing I like to remind myself too is that the act of writing this stuff down is so important. Just defining what you want is crucial and then having the flexibility to change things as you need to is also really important. As we learned the last couple of years, <laughs> sometimes things happen beyond your control and you need to adjust. Maybe, maybe your deadline for such and such wasn't reasonable the first time through, and you need to give yourself another two months before you can get it done. It might not even be um, because of something you didn't do. It might be just, that's just the way it is um, in the industry, right? So you can be flexible with these things. Okay, so step two, you're gonna do the same thing. What's the second thing that you need to do for your short-term goal? And for that, you're going to give yourself a deadline as well. And then you can guess what step three is. It's exactly the same. So the beauty of this system is that you can have as many steps as you need to accomplish the thing it is that you're working on. You can have one. Maybe you only need to do one thing. But maybe you need six things, right? Just to give yourself some clarity. Have you heard of reverse engineering? Okay, I love this concept. So let's say you want to release an EP by November of 2023. You take the finished product and you work backwards. That'll really help you figure out what kind of time you need. Let's say you want to have an album release concert on November 23rd. No, November, what's the day today? 12th, 2023. Um, okay, I want to have actual LPs pressed. Okay, now I need to find out how long, what's the turnaround time when I submit my audio and my artwork to have actual LPs pressed. There's something, there's a deadline. You need to have your music mastered by such and such a date then. How long does a mastering engineer take? A week? There's another step. Oh, you need it mixed. Okay, how long is it gonna to take to mix? Six weeks? Okay, so you can see it working backwards. When do you need to get in the studio? Things are getting real. You can see by now, especially with LPs, because I hear the uh, <laughs> supply chain is messed up. Uh, anyway, you can see how by working backwards, you can help figure out what your timeline's gonna be. All right, so this is also important. When you have your timelines figured out, put the dates in your calendar. <laughs> Don't just leave them on a piece of paper. <laughs> Put them in your calendar, whether it's like analog on a piece of paper or it's in your phone or you have whatever system you use. Um, put them somewhere where you're going to see them all the time, though. Like, just don't file them away in some digital thing where you're never going to see it. Have it there so you can refer to it and help keep you stoked. Okay, now building materials. Um, I'm, this is specifically for people who are wanting to be performing recording musicians. There are certain things that you need. I call them the, the raw building materials in order for you to get anything happening. You need high quality audio, at least three tracks that represent what you do. You need those in WAV files and in MP3 files. Crucial today, you need video. Um, if someone wants to hire you in your group, they want to see how you are interacting with an audience. It doesn't have to be like some expensive professional quality thing. You can do amazing things with GoPros and phones nowadays, right? You just do the best you can do it with what you have right now. Video is very important nowadays. You need to have a bio that is unique to your story. If you can make a bio that tells about who you are and isn't the same thing, like so-and-so was born here and na 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 uh, It's always more interesting if it's um, 
tell us as much of your story as possible and is unique to you. It's recommended that you have a short version and a longer version. So short version, about 250 words is what I seem to see on a lot of um, applications. Um, longer version can be 400 words or longer than that. And then you also need photos. It can be live performance photos or it can be um, headshot, whatever, just something that um, also represents who you are. Okay, so now the power tools, the I like seven tools to really help you along your way. Some of these are um, tools you already possess. Some of them are tools that you will want to collect to help you and develop. Innate qualities, skills and knowledge, and we're all learning all the time. Your team, money, your audience, promotion tools, and opportunity. These are all things that are going to help you along the way make your life easier. So innate qualities, things that you already possess largely. We have talent, creativity, your outlook on life. Are you introverted or are you extroverted? Musicians can be either of those things. Um, your curiosity, your determination, courage, and I think the most important one is empathy. There's a debate that happens with people, a lot of people I know, is talent innate. I have a friend who thinks that talent is nothing but just skill, and he's really talented, so <laughs> I, don't, I disagree with him. Um, but, you know, these are all things that uh, help you with your resilience and you are who you are. You play who you are, right? Your music is who you are, ultimately. Skills and knowledge. This is stuff that you can build all the time. So your chops on your instrument, the amount of practice you put into, into it, your musical knowledge, um, study on your own, studying the masters, private lessons, um, formal study, books, YouTube, and podcasts. I'm probably forgetting some. Okay, and then your team, the people around you. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about people that you are going to hire in this case, but people who are in your life. Your family, friends, bandmates, fellow musicians. You may not play with them, but they're in your community. Mentors and the members of your community around you. My um, best publicist on social media is my mother. <laughs> and her price is... Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, she lives in, in Ottawa and, I, and I, I will thank her on, you know, her Facebook page and I'll say, thanks mom, best publicity ever. Also, um, and I'll say to her friends, my um, Central Canadian distributor will have product soon and that's my mom too, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, money. Now, ew, right? Money and art do not go together. but. Sad, but true. You need money to make things happen in this industry. So whether you have a day job, whether you're playing gigs, whether you're collecting royalties, uh, grants, if you're lucky enough to have a patron, someone who has a tax write-off and funds your recordings, wow, that'd be great. Yeah, it happens. It happens. So. Um, also, I haven't done this myself, but lots of people turn to crowdfunding to raise money for projects. I want to talk about this one a bit because, because of the tension between art and commerce, right? It's a thing. We acknowledge it. My idea when I was in university was that I just wanted to be a professional musician. I just, I didn't care. I just wanted to quit my day job and play music. And to me, that would be a sign that I'd arrived, right? Cut to freelancing in Vancouver, and then things are crazy. And then it, there's this sweet spot where you're working on a recording project and you're maybe doing four gigs a week. And then you're like, okay, this is perfect. And then February comes and your calendar is like a whiteout and you're stressed. So, you know. Uh, when I work with young musicians at the college, I say there's no shame in having a job that allows you to do what you want to do, especially if it, there's flexibility built into it so that 
if you need to if you need to play on a Saturday night, you can. Um, finding balance that works for you is crucial. You don't want to burn out and you don't want to be so stressed out about your life that you're not even enjoying the music anymore, right? So you do what you need to do. I could do a whole semester <laughs> on grant writing. There, we are so lucky in Canada to have FACTOR and the Canada Council and um, your provincial and regional grant giving bodies. We are so, so lucky as artists and candidates to have these opportunities. Um, having been on both sides of grants, having been a recipient and a juror, uh, I know that the music that you are presenting is, is number one. In fact, as a juror, the first thing I do is I listen to the music because I don't want to be influenced by the description of the music. Right? I listen very, very um, intently, and then I read what the artist or the grant writer wants me to know about it. So be aware of that, that your demo, whatever it is you're submitting, is so important. The recording quality is important. You hear people say maybe, oh yeah, it doesn't matter. It can be, it can be whatever quality, but that's not true because I've heard these demos, like your demo is competing with professional quality like recorded in a studio demo and yes musicians have good imaginations but have give your music the best chance it can have by doing the best having the best quality recording you can get um, and when you're filling out your grant application um, whether you've paid someone to do it for you or whether you're doing it yourself make sure you read everything over and over again. I love Grammarly um, for spell check and grammar check um, because even though I just said that music is the most important thing on your application, when um, a juror reads an application that is messy or poorly written, it's going to be a reflection on your application and your music, unfortunately. So if, let's just pretend. Let's just pretend your music is a 10. Another application's music is a 10. The written component, yours is a six. The other application is a 10. There's only so much money to go around, right? And it's really important. Audience. So um, we, we tend to start out where we live and then spread as, we, as our um, careers grow. So your demographic is gonna move from your local town, your city, to regional, provincial, national, international. And there, there is no limit now. Uh, because of um, our reach um, as artists with what we can do online now, you can have fans all over the world. Like if, you're, uh, if you have Apple, um, Apple Music for Artists or Spotify for Artists, you'll see that little pieces of the globe will light up like, what? I have a fan in Kuala Lumpur. This is the coolest thing, right? It's, it's uh, wonderful time to be able to reach people everywhere. Okay, in promotion, as an independent artist, there's so much you can do now. Oh my gosh. I've just released an album, so basically I need to apologize to all of my <laughs> social media contacts. The next few months is just what I have to do. I have to get the stuff happening and be very active on social media. And you have to, the way I do it, it was hard for me to get used to it at first, but my mentality now is, I think, I'm, I'm helping to get the music of my bandmates out there. It's easier for me to think of it that way than to think of it as me. might be my face, but I'm really proud of this music, so I'm, I'm promoting them. You know what I mean, Deb? <laughs> yeah. It's not very Canadian, is it? You go, look at me! <laughs> Even before you get to the website phase, um, Branding and social media. So you might think, what I mean by branding is think of who you are and uh, does your image that you're putting out there, does it vibe with who you really are? Mm -hmm. It's taken me a while, but I know now that, that I want my image to be approachable. Um, my, first, um, my first photos that I had done of me for my first album were very like, 
Um, there was no smiling. But I like to make people laugh. I like to have fun. I'm a good hang. So I try to make sure that, that my stuff that I have on social media and my, my promotion materials reflect that. Uh, it's true to me. It makes sense for me. Social media, um, we could do another click on that. If you, I remember asking, I had a, a social media expert come into a class I teach called Business of Music. And I said, Twitter, really? Do I have to be on Twitter? I, I was very resistant. Okay, um, you know, Instagram, Facebook, I even have a TikTok account. There's like <laughs> one video on there. Um, but the response that I got was, if you are not on Twitter, then the institutions, venues, festivals that are on Twitter cannot include you in their promotion, like Jazz YYC, right? Because I'm on Twitter, Jazz YYC can do their promotion and get, hey, she's doing a, a workshop today, and then I retweet it. It's just kind of like the way it is. Um, you don't have to do it, but why not do it? It takes time, um, but it's free. And that brings me to my next point here. Websites nowadays, there are so many free slash affordable ways you can have your own website. Um, Squarespace has beautiful um, design. I use Bandzoogle, it's not free, I have a paid account, but um, Bandzoogle is geared specifically for musicians. So there's integration with um, your store your gigs, it just makes sense. It's easy to use. I used to try to do um, website design myself in Dreamweaver, and I'm really glad I'm not doing that anymore. I don't have time for it. So yeah, that's totally possible to have your own free website. What are some other free ones? Um, WordPress? WordPress, yeah. There, yeah, there are other free ones I can't, it's escaping me right now. Wix. Wix, that's the one, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, if you don't, if you have a free account, then you'll get the Wix um, Wix will be in your URL. Print media. I'm working with a publicist now who says that to be in print media, you need four to seven months lead time for your um, promotion to possibly get in there. There's no guarantee that, that you're going to be in like a glossy magazine, but they take a lot of time before you send them anything and then it might or might not get in. Reviews are wonderful and I highly recommend that if you get a review, tag the person on social media and the, or the magazine or what the, whatever it is, website, and you thank them for it. Don't feel weird about that. It's uh, so important to have someone else saying nice things about your music. When you do get a review, make sure you copy it. You keep a copy of it for yourself. Um, and anytime you use a quote, even if it's just like one sentence from a review, um, make sure that you you give the, the writer credit. So you say such and such and such by all about jazz, or even use the author's name, right? That's, it just gives you credibility um, if you have a quote that comes from someone else and not your mom. <laughs> um, playlists, Spotify playlists are a big deal, um, not to necessarily generate income, but to get your music out there. Uh, we have also competitions. Beware of these competitions. So there are, you might get emails that say, hey, you can enter this competition. It only costs you $75 to submit a song. Hmm, I'm not a really big fan of those competitions. It's like song shark kind of ish. Uh, that being said, I have seen young songwriters who've gotten um, like a runner-up in a category, and they use that as their, part of their promotion. Just, I would say though, as a rule, be wary of anyone who asks you for money upfront when you're entering any like competition. Advertising, we can do that for free now um, on, on social media, but if you wanna do the paid version and actually pay for ads on social media, you can do that. It's not that expensive. Publicists are expensive. Once you get to the um, level in your career where you need to hire people to take that over for you, publicists and radio promoters, but they have connections that we do not have. Uh, radio promoters have a list of 
all of the radio stations that they actually have a connection with that and they've been building for years and years and years. I naively thought when I did my first album that I could just send my CD out to random radio stations that they would play it. That's not the way it works. <laughs> the radio promoter does that for you. And they're basically vetting you before your um, album gets sent to the radio stations. So they have a reputation that they've been working on for years to build in their trusted source. Opportunity. Okay, this kind of goes back to, it's related to your innate qualities, but it's also how you act when you're faced with things. So say yes. Um, as a rule, I think, say yes to anything that comes your way. There are exceptions to every rule. If you are absolutely sure you're not going to do well, if you're not prepared, like let's say you have three songs that you can play and sing, and there you get hired to do an hour and a half set, okay, maybe don't do that. <laughs> but someone wants you to come sit in, say yes. If someone says, I need a sub for a gig two months from now, and you think, oh, I'm excited about that, I'm a little nervous about it, say yes and do it and it, it, learn the things that you need to learn. My husband learned to play electric bass because he did that, right? And now he's had a career for decades playing acoustic bass and, and electric bass in addition to his original instrument, guitar. So you want to tell us a story? Well, it's just, I got a call from a, a friend of mine who played piano that I played guitar with for many years. And, and this was in the 80s when there, there was an energy crisis here and all of a sudden budgets got cut. And so four or five, six piece bands, we go down to maybe a piano trio if you're lucky. And so this guy called me, he says, do you play bass? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I went and bought a bass. This was like a Wednesday. I bought a bass the next day. And I built a cabinet out of plywood, painted it black, put a speaker in it, and I used my guitar amp to power it. And I played bass. <laughs> Not very well, mind you, but, but I did it. But, yeah, that's yeah. Doug Stevenson, right? <laughs> but he plays bass very well now. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I like that, I like that thing though. If, if you're nervous about something and excited at the same time, say yes, because the opposite thing that you'll do with that situation where you say no, is the thing that you will regret because then nothing happens when you say no. You just kind of go more and more into your shell, right? Instead of opening up. So yeah, and uh, that, brings me to the bottom one, building on successes. So, oh, what a feeling when you do something that makes you nervous. Like you said, yes, you did it. You're like, hey, you know what? You evaluate. That was really fun. I want to do that again. Okay. Maybe there were some things that you want to polish up. Okay, fine. You do that. But that was a successful feeling when you did that. It makes the next time easier and the next time easier. The opposite of that is maybe you did, maybe you just didn't practice enough. Maybe you just didn't, you weren't feeling it. You feel like kind of you know, a little bit down about what just happened. And then the next opportunity comes your way. You're going to be nervous about saying yes again. So you know what I mean? Like just get on that, that upward path. It's like a self feeding fire, really entrepreneurism. That's your um, spirit. I know people who are, so entrepreneurial who have eight things going on at once and in some cases three things will work five won't but that's way better than having no ideas or one idea and having that one idea work right so yeah uh, I, i'd say if you don't feel you have an entrepreneurial spirit um get to know someone who does and kind of like watch what they do and and acknowledge how brave they are location oh yeah um, nowadays, it's a lot easier to do what you need to do um, where you are. You don't necessarily have to live in um, LA or New York or Toronto or uh, Nashville. We can live here and do what we want. B question. Is your music where you want it to be? This is the most important question. So what I want you to do is look at back at the words from the very first question. Remember I asked you to circle some words? that the question was, you, you made a statement, I am this, I am that, right? Are those circled words 
things that felt off in those statements, are those circled words things that you really want to develop in yourself? It's hard to answer those questions, but they're crucial for you to get anywhere. Lastly, your phone is your best friend. Record yourself often. If you record yourself in a rehearsal and you cringe, that means you need to do that more often. Uh, we call this exposure therapy, just getting used to it, right? Get used to it. And you'll be able to hear yourself more objectively every time you do it. Because guess what? The audience is hearing that. It's clo that's closer to what the audience is hearing than whatever fun you're having inside. This is, this is what I find. Like I perform music and I'm like, oh my God, this feels so good. I get excited, okay? This is my MO. I get excited, I rush. That's just what I do. It feels great. And then I listen back and I'm like, oh, because my emotion was overtaking my music, right? Um, if you don't listen back after the fact, after the excitement wears off, you don't get that information. So use your phone, and you can use your phone to video record yourself as well as, as audio record. Evaluate. Ask yourself what is needed. Lastly, you can go to my website and I will email you these things that I've collected along the way. Some of them have been given to me, like, for example, the booking spreadsheet. It's an Excel spreadsheet that I use to keep track of um, especially jazz festival applications. Like, there are many of them. Did I actually submit that? Mm -hmm. This is pending. Oh, this one, I missed the deadline. Oh, this I'll do better next year, <laughs> like that kind of thing. <laughs> it's so hard to keep organized, but the spreadsheet's really useful. I have spreadsheets for um, your taxes, like it'll have all the deductions for indie musicians along the top. Mm. You just plug them in, it adds them up. Um, the five-year plan and one-year plan, which we did a little bit of today. Uh, there'll be templates for a one-sheet repertoire list. I'm not going in order, I apologize. Uh, and then there are samples of stage plots, input lists, and release schedules. So for you to get that, you go there, and I promise you, I will not spam you. <laughs> This is just so I can send, I, I can't put these um, on this presentation, I'll email them to you. Okay, are there any questions? Yes. Do you still press CDs? Do I still press CDs? I do. My um, radio promoter still does it the old school way. So, um... <laughs> oh, I brought this actually. Um, my one sheet yeah. for my new release. This goes to all of the radio stations. And I brought this here so you can look at it. But um, I, I don't know that I will do it next time. Mm -hmm. But I had the minimum run from myself done, 500 copies. 200 were sent to US radio stations and 100 and something were sent to Canadian radio stations, jazz, jazz radio. Some people still like the physical thing. I feel like I want to go to vinyl, honestly. Do you? Uh, well, that's a good question because uh, it seems like uh, everybody was pressing a CD these days. Nobody's buying them because nobody hasn't even been playing on them. And, but in terms of the promotional aspect, what I'm hearing is that all the radio stations and, and entities are all, are all taking digital submissions. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, I think this is, this is probably my last CD. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, my mom has a CD player in her car. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. But but vinyl is exciting again because it's big and mm. it's fresh. Yeah. Your big songs to go on your last album. Ah, oh, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so we had um, I had the concept for the album 2018 when we were mixing the last EP. Um, we wrote all of the arrangements by the end of 2019, had two concerts in February of 2020, mm -hmm. and the idea was we're gonna take all of the work we have done, keep the rehearsals going, and we were set to re record in June of that, of 2020. Mm -hmm. So we did our February gigs, and then I just, you know, the studio was saying, oh, you can still record, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to do it. I, I, I wanted to hibernate. <laughs> <laughs> so I hibernated and 
we recorded in May of this year. Um, so that, that was definitely the, the hardest thing. Other than that, um, this one's been really good, actually. Uh, I don't know, I, I was lucky to get some um, funding for this, which helps a lot. And everything's been going great. Okay, thank you. I just want to say, uh, thank you for attending my workshop. <laughs> All the best to you in your pursuit of your musical dreams. And thank you to Jazz YYC for this wonderful opportunity. All the best to you, thank you. Thank you.